We had a, sort of a lot of rivalry in those early years and a little bit of friction. When you think of 60s music, it's likely you'll think of either the Rolling Stones or the Beatles. These two bands dominated the pop landscape at that time. They would go on to revolutionise rock music around the world, influencing the likes of, well, pretty much everyone. The 70s and 80s rock industry was built on the foundations that the Beatles and the Rolling Stones had laid down. Whether it was the squeaky clean Fab Four from Liverpool or the edgy bad boys from London, you were either in Camp Stones or Camp Beatles. It was a fierce cultural rivalry. Or was it? Many people will tell you that the entire rivalry was fabricated by the media, but I'm not so sure about that. There's a lot of evidence that suggests it was in fact a genuine rivalry. So I'll provide the facts and you pop your thoughts in the comments below. Okay? Deal. Hi, I'm Adam. Welcome back to Music Mongoose. April 1963 is when the bands first crossed paths. The Beatles had just released their debut album at that point, Please Please Me, and had had their debut single doing pretty well in the charts too, Love Me Do. The Stones were playing a gig in Richmond, London, the Crawdaddy Club at the Station Hotel to be precise. The Beatles, fresh on the London scene, heard about the Stones through word of mouth and decided to attend the show. And I was doing this song and suddenly I saw, there they were, right in front of me. The Fab Four. George Harrison, impressed by the group, personally recommended them to Decca Records and helped them get their first ever record deal. Music journalist Don Nickel from Disc wrote this at the time. The Beatles, who recommended the Stones to Decca, may well live to rue the day. This group could be challenging them for the top places in the immediate future. I know what you're thinking, it doesn't sound very rivally at the moment, does it? And you'd be right. In fact, in the beginning, the band seemed to be the best of friends. McCartney and Lennon even wrote a song for the Rolling Stones. I Wanna Be Your Man was the Rolling Stones' second single and became their breakthrough hit. Lennon and McCartney were originally working on it for the Beatles when they heard that the Stones were in need of material for their second single. Lennon and McCartney moseyed on down to the studio where they were and apparently finished the song in the corner of the room. The Stones took it from there and it went to number 12 in the UK charts, putting the Stones on the map of UK music. The Beatles released a version of the track themselves on their second album, With The Beatles, sung by Ringo Starr. Still very friendly, aren't they? When does the rivalry kick in? Well, not yet, because there are still some pleasantries that needed to be exchanged. In 1967, the bands would salute each other with their album artworks. On the artwork for Sgt. Pepper, there's a doll wearing a t-shirt which reads, Welcome the Rolling Stones. And on the album cover of their Satanic Majesty's Request, the Fab Four's faces can be seen in the flowers in the artwork. I should mention as well that the bands intentionally staggered their releases so as not to compete with each other when new albums or singles came out. At this point though, the media had really latched on to the whole rivalry thing. They were pushing that narrative like there was no tomorrow. And why? Well, because drama sells. People love a bit of drama. Not only would they appear on each other's artworks, they pop up in each other's songs as well. McCartney and Lennon appeared on both Sing This All Together, See What Happened, and We Love You, although they're uncredited. And Jagger and Richards appeared singing along on the Our World broadcast performance of All You Need Is Love. All right, they've been all lovey-dovey, friendly-friendly so far. Let's get into the juicy rivalry now. And we'll start with that song that Lennon and McCartney gave to the Rolling Stones out of the kindness of their hearts. Or not. In a later interview, John Lennon had this to say. It was a throwaway. Ringo sang it for us and the Stones did their version. It shows how much importance we put on them. We weren't going to give them anything great, right? You know, that's how little we thought about the track. We let the bloody drummer sing it in our version. Poor Ringo. And sorry for my Lennon impression, that was horrible, wasn't it? Sticking with John Lennon, though, he was convinced that the Rolling Stones was essentially ripping off the Beatles systematically. In 1970, John Lennon spoke to, ironically, Rolling Stone magazine, and had this to say, Cue the bleeper! I would like to just list what we did and what the Stones did two months after on every f***ing album. Every f***ing thing we did, Mick does exactly the same. He imitates us. Satanic Majesties is Pepper. We Love You is the most f***ing bullshit. That's all you need is love. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems like a lot of swearing for an apparently fictitious rivalry. Maybe there is some truth to it after all. 
Lennon even put this frustration into a Beatles song. Probably. A line from Digger Pony might be a swipe at Jagger and the Stones. I roll a stony, well, you can imitate everyone you know. Supposedly, it's a dig at the fact that the Stones were prone to imitating the Beatles. But let's be honest, the lyrics to that song are complete nonsense, aren't they? So who the heck knows what it could mean? Now, still in 1970, surprise, surprise, John Lennon takes another dig at the Rolling Stones. He famously said, I think Mick is a joke, with all that f dancing. I always did. They're not in the same class, music-wise or power-wise. Never were. It wasn't just the Beatles throwing punches, though, because in 1987, Mick Jagger had this to say about the Beatles' breakup. When the Beatles broke up, I couldn't give a shit. Thought it was a very good idea. A year later, though, in 1988, Mick Jagger inducted the Beatles into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And in his speech, he celebrated the Beatles. He thanked them for breaking America. And he said he was proud to be the one to induct them into the Hall of Fame. So was this the end of the rivalry? No. Fast forward to 2015, Keith Richards has a dig at the Beatles by mocking Sgt. Pepper. Some people think it's a genius album, but I think it's a mishmash of rubbish. The year after, he criticised the Beatles again, saying they couldn't cut it as a live band. Fast forward a few more years to 2020, on The Howard Stern Show, Paul McCartney would reiterate everything that John Lennon had previously said about the Rolling Stones copying everything the Beatles did. And then came the famous dig in 2021. Paul McCartney called the Stones a blues cover band in a New Yorker interview. Although, according to Keith Richards, he did send a note afterwards claiming that it was all out of context and he didn't mean it like that. So, there was a lot of back and forth insults over a 50 year period. With all that evidence, it's hard to believe that there wasn't some truth in the rivalry. Or maybe they lent into the media's fabrication of the whole thing in order to sell more records. The drummers of both bands were adamant that the rivalry was fictitious. But again, they're only drummers, so who cares what they say? Joking, I'm joking. Recent news of the Rolling Stones' new album, Hackney Diamonds, might be able to put a full stop on this so-called rivalry once and for all, because both Paul and Ringo are set to appear on the album. Well, perhaps a sign of the rivalry finally being put to bed? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I think there must have been some rivalry. When you are the two biggest bands in a certain era, there must be some rivalry happening there. Yeah, maybe the press hammed it up and blew it out of proportion, but I do think there must have been some rivalry underneath it all. And hey, rivalry is a good thing, isn't it? It inspires each band to outperform the other one, thus enhancing the quality of their overall products. Speaking of rivalries, by the way, it turns out Pete Townsend of The Who had a massive one with Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin. You can click here to watch that video. Please do like this video if you liked it, and remember to subscribe to keep up to date with my regular videos. And with that, I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose. <laughs> okay, bye-bye!